Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, let's learn about a recent security incident that was reported by a developer at Microsoft called Andrus. Remember this name. So Andrus has reported a security incident on Exe library. Exe library is quite popular. Packages like OpenSSH are bundled along with the Exe library. Now this security incident turns out to be super scary because it has the potential to impact almost every single Linux system out there. And what's even more scary, this security incident is a very well planned, planted security incident by an open source contributor. Yes, an open source contributor has intentionally, deliberately added malware to this exe library, knowing it is used by OpenSSH so that this hacker can gain unauthorized access to the Linux systems. Because they have added the malware, they know that malware allows them to gain unauthorized access to the Linux systems. And imagine how many number of Linux systems are available over the internet. Almost every critical application is run on the Linux system. Almost every production server is run on Linux. So the impact of this security incident is very wide and it is so scary. In this video, let's try to understand how an ordinary open source contributor was able to do all these things. And let's also try to understand if you are impacted by this security incident. If yes, how to overcome? Like what are the steps that you should take to eliminate the security incident in your environment? So the story goes back to 2023 January where a person allegedly a person because still we don't know if this is a person or if this is an institution group of people, but I can say a GitHub account with name Gia Tin has contributed their first contribution to the package XZ. So it's an open source GitHub repository called XZ and they made their first contribution to it. After that, they made series of contributions and then a group of people till now we are not aware of the details of this group of people because again those people never appeared on this project so a person called jigar kumar starts a thread or a discussion on the exe utils community saying the previous maintainer of this exe github repository is not that active if you don't know what is a maintainer in open source world maintainer is the one that takes care of the project. You can simply assume as a project lead or someone who can make decision on the project. So Jigar Kumar starts a conversation that the then open source maintainer of this particular project called Collins. I assume that's right. So Collins is not that active and this project needs a new maintainer. And the other person who is very active on it is G Aten. Then a bunch of people, four to five people, again starts liking that particular thread discussion. And everyone decides that, you know, G Aten should be the new maintainer of this project. But Colin says that, yes, we are also looking for open source contributor and eventually G Aten might become the maintainer of this project. And that also happens. So eventually, after some more contributions, Gia10 becomes the maintainer of this XZ GitHub repository. Of course, now you cannot see all this because GitHub has blocked access to the XZ repository. Looking at the noise that people are making at the XZ repository and giving more freedom for the security researchers to understand what actually has happened. So now you cannot see the exe repository, but these are the events that has happened. And now Gia10 becomes 
the new maintainer of this open source project called XC. After a while, GIA10 also removes call-ins, details, and email everything from the repository. Basically, these details are required. Uh, if there is any security scanning, because these are uh, Open Linux Foundation repositories, if there are any uh, scanning tools that are scanning the projects, and if they want to report any vulnerabilities, they send the details to the maintainer email address and maintainer other details that are provided. So GIATIN removes Colin's details and adds his or her, because I'm not sure who it is, their details to the GitHub repository as maintainer. So they start getting the security issues or security leaks, whatever it is. This year, after a year of open source contributions and making the significant impact and name on the project, this year in February, GIA10 makes some code changes and creates two new releases on the exe package, which are 5.6.0 and 5.6.1. And there are two to three commits which GIA10 makes, and there are very, very uh, malware related uh, commits, but nobody comes to know about it because GIA10 adds these malwares to the test code of the GitHub repository. And these malwares are added as that dot MP4. These are added as some kind of binaries that people are not so suspicious about it. Because this exe package is all about compression and decompression. The dot MP4 files and the other binaries are added to test the compression and decompression of this particular uh, malware. So people thought it's a general uh, binary that GIA10 has added to the repository. Of course, there is so much more to analyze. There is so much more to know about this particular security incident because this was just reported last week, literally three to four days back. And people are still trying to figure out are there any previous versions or only 5.6.0 and 5.6.1 are impacted? Yet we need to more, know more. But for now, going back to the story. So this is added as part of the test code. So nobody who is scanning the GitHub repository or the source code comes to know about this uh, malware related code. And what happens after that? G10 releases 5.6.0 and 5.6.1 with this malware related code. And this is very well planted that it's not available in GitHub. It's not available in the GitHub related packages, but they only come into picture during the build time of the project. Now, once the project is built and the release star balls are pushed to a particular artifactory location, that release star balls have this malware. And once 5.6.0 and 5.6.1 are released, so distributions like Debian Unstable, Fedora 40, early versions of Fedora 41 have started using XZ 5.6.0 and XZ 5.6.1, which are malware related XZ versions. When one of the developers at Microsoft, that is Andres, who was using this Debian Unstable, in one of the test environments have noticed that open SSH was taking more time than expected. Allegedly, previously it was taking 0 0.2 uh, seconds or something. And now it started taking 0 0.8 seconds or something. I don't remember the time, but Andres has figured out that there is a significant delay in the SSH time. So Andres has started debugging, triaging, and notice that, okay, there is something fishy about the exe package. How did Andres identify? Basically, exe was uh, taking a lot more uh, CPU and notice that uh, some of the uh, tests, the CPU related tests were failing uh, with respect to the exe uh, library. So Andres started uh, debugging triaging and finally came to a conclusion that there is something fishy about exe. Let me go and report the security vulnerability. And that's how people came to know about this security incident. We are very lucky because 
the debian unstable fedora 40 fedora 41 early versions are mostly not used in the production systems because in the production systems people use debian uh, people use red hat uh, enterprise linux or people use any uh, stable versions of the distributions enterprise distributions so most of the systems are not impacted because andres has reported the security incident in the timely basis and look what an open source contributor has done right so we need to be very careful uh, whether you are using an open source or whether you are using a, a stable uh, popular enterprise version you still have to perform security scanning on everything that you are using in your enterprise now going back to this entire thing are you impacted or not if you are using particular distributions like uh, Debian Unstable, Fedora 40, Fedora 41 early versions, then yes, you are impacted. Also, if you are using uh, Kali Linux, I think you are impacted. So it is better you look at the CV number that I'm sharing and all the details that you see. Uh, there are also a few links in the description. You perform proper security analysis with the Linux systems of your organization. You just need to figure out what is the XZ version that your Linux systems are using? If they are using 5.6.0, 5.6.1, you can understand your OpenSSH is compromised and your Linux systems are compromised. Otherwise, you are good, but still it is good to upgrade to the latest version. If you are using things like Red Hat Enterprise, uh, Debian, uh, proper enterprise version, then yeah, you are not impacted. So this is the entire security incident. It is super interesting. You can read more about these things because I've explained at a very high level. Using the links in the description, you can understand the step-by-step -step series of events that have taken place. See you all in the next video. Take care.